to set to record and I'm gonna open the uh, uh, looks like that's not what I want to open let's see I sent you the uh, actual exam uh, study guide for 1106 midterm practice there it is okay so the midterm will deal with a geometrical exercise uh, definitely not the one that i sent to you but the reason for this exercise was uh, to show how one will see the problems set up on the midterm so my goal will be to make sure that people don't get the same exact answers when you take this exam. And I utilize for that last digits of student ID. So as you can see here, the last digit of a student ID in this exercise is six because, well, I made up a student ID, one, two, three, four, five, six. So last digit will be six, looks like. And the prior digit will be five. So there will be two exercises on the midterm exam. And the very last digit will be six. And the previous digit, five, from my particular example. Of course, you have definitely different digits than that, right? So you're going to need to use your own digits from student ID and put them in the exercise instead of letter B and A. And that's the idea. So what about the problems? What pages and what sections are they going to come from? So let me go back to the textbook and the problem will come from the number of elements in a set. So let me look at this section 2.2. So maybe page like 60, let me find it. it may take a little time so 67 but i'll tell you exactly what to prepare for when we have our exam on wednesday so there is no class coming on monday because of holiday the college is closed and everybody will celebrate president's day so monday we don't have any classes in this college and actually no college in the United States, there will be classes because of a holiday, long weekend. So that's why we're gonna have the exam on Wednesday. And that's why I'm doing a review today, just to make sure that uh, we have a review because otherwise, since exam scheduled for Wednesday, there will be no review, so that's no good. So we looked at the Venn diagrams and that brought us to the very interesting formula about number of elements in the set. And uh, example eight here is a good practice exercise for the first problem. So this example actually gives us a formula that says that number of elements in the union of two sets is nothing else but the sum of those set elements, so n a plus number of elements in b minus the number of elements in the overlap in the intersection of those two sets, a intersect b. Let me write this a little bit nicer. Clean that Good again. So a intersect b. So I will have one exercise related to this formula. So problems of this kind appear here at the end of the section. We did some of those like 93, 94, maybe I can do one here today for you. So let's say exercise number 95. So that'd be a, a kind of problem that you will get on your midterm exam 
on Wednesday. So exercise 95 says that an A number of elements is eight letters and nine numbers. So I can say it's going to be eight plus nine, right? Which is 17. Okay. Now there is a set B that also has some elements. And this is going to be seven letters and 10 numbers. So it'll be seven plus 10, which is equal to also 17. How about that? Okay. Now there is also set intersection or both A and B here. And they say that there are three numbers are in both and four letters as well. So it'll be four plus three, which is seven, right? So the question is, how can I find out what be the number of elements in set A or B? Or means union. So we're gonna have to find the union of these two sets, the number of elements. And looks like I'm gonna just take these three numbers and put them in the formula. So I would say this is a nice exercise, right? 17 plus 17 minus seven will be the answer, which is in this case, 27. So as I said, I will base these questions on last digits of student IDs. So some people might get not 17, but 18 here. So it'd be different numbers, but the point of story that the question will be the same for everyone. So you will be asked to find something related to either union or intersection of these two sets. And that'd be a first exercise for the midterm. The midterm will actually have two exercises, first and a second. So one of the problems will look like that. So what's the second exercise for the midterm? Well, let me go back to this textbook and uh, look at the, uh, uh, I'm also sorry that you have trouble logging in, but the good thing about the midterm that uh, I will send it to everyone by email. So once you open your email, you wouldn't really need to log into Zoom that day. You just uh, do problems on a piece of paper and um, send me your work and that'd be all you need. But of course I will be also logged into Zoom as usual on Wednesday in the morning at 10. So if you need some clarifications from me or anything happens, just uh, go to Zoom and I will be there so we can always see what is going on. But again, you don't really have to log into Zoom when you take midterm, as long as you get my email, do work on a piece of paper, make sure you show all work, just like I did here in exercise 95. I think everyone can see what is done here, right? So that's what is expected to be done for excellent grade. Of course, if somebody just gives me the answer, correct answer, well, it still be a good uh, result, but not excellent. So I will expect you to actually show your work and then make a picture and send it to me by email. So anyways, the second exercise should be coming from section like 10.2. So I go to page 625, maybe 628, so, and get the angles like story with all these little pictures so I can find an exercise that is good to do to prepare for the midterm, something similar with similar ideas. So that exercise will be coming from chapter 10. As I said, there'll be only two questions on the midterm exam. And we can try to do one of the exercises here, let's say exercise number 10, that appears in section 10.2. That says, find the measure of each numbered angle. 
let me do exercise number 10 here. Let me clean this a little bit. So an exercise 10, which I think will be a good example of what we are going to have on the midterm. I can right away mark a few of those so-called vertical angles or the opposites. Like here, for example, I can put 135 degrees because it's the same, right? The opposite. Here I can also put, oh, sorry, that's not the exercise. Here I can put 65 degrees right away. That's also going to be a, a vertical angle. So they wanna mark all of the measures for the angles in this exercise. So right away, I can see my favorite vertical angles. Well, then it's up to you which other angles you wanna deal with. So for example, if you start with the lower joint, then we can use our favorite procedure of supplementary angles. So I'm gonna just look at, let's say an angle 135, and then I'll be able to find measure of angle six, which is by the way, gonna be exact same as measure of angle seven, right? Because those two are also vertical. So what is angle six measured? Well, that should be 50 or 45. So the sum is 180, right? So the measure should be 45. So you can always subtract from 180 that 135 and get 45 for measure of that angle here, as well as for the measure of angle on the opposite side, another vertical angle. Please notice that this 45 is not only measured as angle six. It's also gonna be here as well as angle there. Do you see that? You see, Alex, what is going on? Well, I'm looking at the transversal line for two parallels. And that's what they told us here. The lines are parallel. So what I can do is right away notice that if 45 we have here, then the so-called interior alternative angle on the other side will also be the same. And that's a 45. So look at this, there are so many 45s here. How about that? 45 and 45, and we have them all placed on the picture. So what would be the next part? Well, it looks like next part, I can see what remaining two little angles going to be on that same exact diagram. Let me mark them with green, like the one here called two. And its vertical will be angle five. So there'll be another pair of exactly the same angles. I'm gonna mark them with three markings because they're the same. So how can I figure those out? Well. I can look at the joint with one, two, and three angles. So I already know that 65 was on one side, right? And 45 was on the other side. And I'm gonna utilize the fact that these three angles together give us half of a full rotation or 180 degrees. In other words, to be precise, I'm gonna subtract from 180 both of these 45 and 65 that actually total to 110. So when I do such a subtraction, I'm gonna get 70, right? 70 for the angle here on the top, as well as for the angle there on the bottom. I also do realize that we have so many, so many different ways in doing these exercises that you could start out someplace else and get exact same results anyways. So it is really up to you how to find those measurements for the angles. As long as you do them right, it's absolutely, absolutely fine. But I will expect you to write me something, not just to put the numbers for the answer, but looks like I need to do a little bit of work consider one joint like here, the other joint like here. So I expect that you do some work before you give the answer and you will do some work, right? So you should make pictures of all your work and send me by email 
along with your midterm answers. I'm sure it's not gonna to take too long. So we're almost there and we now need to finish up with this exercise and we need to decide what be measure of angle nine. Can you tell me that right away? It looks like angle nine is analogous to the equation above is also going to be a alternate interior angle, but with respect to another transversal. So please notice that both angles nine and 10 are the same because they're verticals, right? And at the same time, angle nine must be exactly the same as 65 degrees angle, right? Because it's uh, on the other side of that transversal line. So I can say that this is gonna be 65 then, and so is, well, let me put a little bit smaller. This looks like 650, so 65 degrees, right? Degrees, that. And so will be the angle nine as well. I guess I'm not gonna be able to fit 65 degrees in here, but you could do that. There are various other approaches. Somebody could say 45, 70, so it should be 65. So since we have already seen so many different types of exercises that we're dealing with vertical, with interior, exterior angles, there are various little approaches that you could take and still get the same answer. And of course, your approach is the best. So I'm not saying that what I just did for exercise 10 is the only way to be done. You take your own way and it'd be absolutely fine. So the exam will be on Wednesday morning and it will consist of two questions. And they will be very, very similar to the ones that I just did today. So I would recommend that you redo the same problems maybe sometime on Tuesday when it gets closer to the midterm exam day. And of course, do your homework, right? Email me your homework. I already got homework from a few people in class and that's very good, very good. And homework is due on the day of the midterm, which is gonna be Wednesday next week. So please have it ready and uh, send me pictures of your work by email. So that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about today. So I'm waiting for your questions. If anything, don't hesitate. Ask, I'm here, I'm waiting. So I'm not gonna put any time limit for the midterm exam. I'm gonna send you this exam a little earlier than at 10 o'clock on Wednesday, maybe an hour earlier or so. So when you wake up, you can check your email and uh, start doing the midterm. And uh, pictures should be emailed to me, not put on the blackboard or someplace who knows where. Just uh, as I email you the midterm, send it directly to your email. You should also send your work directly to my email and that'd be the way to go. And I'm not going to say you have to be done by 10.50 or by 11 or by noon even. Yeah, I'll give you extra time if you need. I know things may happen. Electricity may go off, who knows, or internet signal or whatever. So it, I understand that's technical issues. So you can take a little more time. That's fine. So don't panic. You will have plenty of time. But I still expect to get your midterms back sometime that afternoon, right? So one o'clock, two o'clock, okay, three o'clock. I say, okay, three o'clock, no problem. So yes, on Wednesday, you don't have to log in unless you have some question, unless you don't understand and you need me to clarify what this exercise is talking about. Well, I'm sure that you will be able to understand, but for just in case, I will be on Zoom. But again, you don't have to log in. So it's up to you, it's up to you. Anything else? 
No, Professor, I just want to say thank you. I'm almost 40 and I was never a good student in math. And for the first time, I'm not like feeling anxiety prior a math test. Thank Ooh. you. The way that you explain, yeah. you take away the anxiety. You you are a really good professor. Thank you so much. Well, I agree. You. Yeah, you, you've been a huge help to I think we, I think I can speak for all of us. So you've been a huge help for the entire for the entire um, semester. Oh, I'm glad to hear that I actually was helpful, not uh, uh, doing lots of confusion. So, but anyways, if somebody gets confused, please don't hesitate to ask because I'm here to help. And uh, you will see that the midterm will be a fair exam. I don't plan any tricks and traps and anything. My goal is to give you good grade and to help you to learn something, right? So that's really all uh, one needs to realize. So don't panic. And I'm glad that you are not panicking because there is nothing to panic about. What to panic about? These little angles, they're not scary. They're just angles. They're our new little friends. So great. So it sounds that you are ready to enjoy a long weekend that you well deserved, right? So please have a very good weekend. But don't forget that we have a exam on Wednesday. So on Wednesday, don't forget to check your email in the morning. Thank you. Thank you for coming over. Have a very good weekend. You too, Professor. Okay. Bye bye. Have a good day. Professor, there's like no quiz, nothing like that for today, right? No, no quiz. I don't collect attendance. I just do a little refresher before the long weekend. So I guess, why not? So. Perfect. Thank you so much, Professor. Again, I couldn't agree more with the other students. I have never had a professor that has made class as relaxing and as enjoyable as you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Have a good day. Thank you. All right, so if there are no questions, I guess I'm going to stop this for today and uh, end the class meeting then. Bye-bye.